man's world. She's 28-year-old Sylvia Hauser from Rushton in Northamptonshire, and she's the reigning British drag race champion in her class. John Myatt's been watching this fast lady in action at the sport's main centre in this country. Centipod Raceway in Bedfordshire, an English outpost of an American-originated sport, and a sport where women are very much the exception. Sylvia Hauser is truly an original, five feet two inches, blonde and married. Husband Jeff is an ace mechanic and a driver himself, but it's Sylvia who hits the headlines as queen of the drag strips. Articulate and pretty, she's great from a publicity point of view, but she's also great on the track. She can beat the men on their own terms. Racing is all about having the courage to keep that accelerator flat on the floor. But what's it like when you're waiting to go? Well, I get very, very wound up. I'm very wound up. In fact, I get, I get the jitter something chronic. But once I actually... I'm in the car. I go round to start the burnout. I, I go like a, an ice-cold machine, if you like. I go from being like this to like that. And I've got a job to do. And that job gets done the right way every time. I mean... I just turn, I just changed totally. Sylvia's burnouts getting tyres warm and soft are famous throughout the sport. But racing starts back home at Rushton, where a willing crew and her husband Jeff take care of the mechanical problems, leaving the lady of the house to cope with domestic chores. <laughs> the Hauser homestead is something of an animal sanctuary, with mare and foal getting pride of place and a lot of attention. Hello. A refugee from London where husband Jeff still works to subsidise the racing, Sylvia's devoted to the rural life. The foals have first success as a horse breeder and therefore very special. I don't want to be nibbled, thank you. Come along. The family includes a couple of rabbits, four chickens and untold cats. Yet despite all the surroundings of the oh, idyllic no. country life, the prime motivation is blazing speed over a quarter mile strip, drag racing. We are both totally dedicated to it and I should say that it's about 85-90% of my life is racing, sort of seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and it's a case of finding the 25th hour to look after everything else. So it's a very professional approach to racing it? Oh yes, um, obviously I think if you're going to do something you should do it properly. When you race a car you should look the part. I mean we've got a very good uniform, we always try to keep the car looking nice. We like to give a good show and give a good, you know, professional show to the paying public. Dragsters lining up for scrutineering resemble a circus parade for cars. The front ends are often very interesting and sometimes the rear ends repay study too. Among the cars, you may recognise the odd popular favourite of former years, but in reality, drag racers are very much specialist vehicles. And the funny cars are no laughing matter. They're the ones that go really fast. Some may look a bit like schoolboy racers, dream vehicles. Some seem more like nightmares. Power here is provided by aircraft jet engines. 26 feet long, these monsters, plus flames. Keeping cool's not easy, and when the monsters finally charge down the track, it really is like saying goodbye to a dragon. And if dragons belong in fairy stories, so do naughty cars in modern fairy stories. Actually, it's a mini with a chunk out. It's even got a fairy tale sort of name. No fairy stories for the houses. Sylvia looks on as hubby Jeff hurtles by on his first run, only to hit trouble as he crossed the finishing line. Well, that looks like a pretty expensive mess. Yeah, it looks extremely expensive. It's about four thousand pounds worth. Yeah. What happened? The throttle just stuck wide open. I turned it off, and it was just such a high engine speed. It just kept detonating. It just kept on running. How do you feel when when you see that happen? Because you're just about to go out to race. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel really, really done in because I love this car. I mean, this is my claim to fame, this car. And uh, 
it's a lovely car and I just hate to see anything happen to it and it's heartbreaking because so much work we spent so many hours on making a production car which is all standard parts that run as quick as that runs I mean that just run 11.54 seconds 118 miles an hour and that is a standard production car Throughout the afternoon, tyres are thoroughly warmed and nerves thoroughly strained, watching the starter's Christmas tree for the green light, desperate for a perfect getaway. Starting well is one thing, stopping is even more important, and if you're going that fast, then a parachute helps. The Hosa prepares to go again. She'd like to run a funny car, topping 200 miles an hour, but that'd require 50,000 pounds for a season's operations, and there's no green light for that sort of expenditure. For now, Sylvia's got to be content to be best in her class, and she doesn't exactly crawl along. Silver Houses last time there for a last run, 10.45 at 128 mile an hour. Sylvia Houser then in the big Dodge Challenger. Perfectly at home in the hectic world of drag racing, Sylvia's also fascinated by a gentler kind of horsepower. What if she had to choose between the two? Uh, you put me in a very difficult position there. Um, the cars obviously come first, but then a car you can put in a garage and forget about, a horse you can't. So therefore, I suppose, as they're alive, I think a lot, you know, I, I think a lot of them as they're actually live things. I love animals very much. I couldn't make a decision. You know, I couldn't say I'd give either up. But I certainly couldn't give you up, could I? Hey? <laughs> no. 